Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankara AS Academy. Today is date is 9th of October 2024. Now before getting into the newspaper analysis, I have an important announcement for you. The pre-storming UPSC prelims test series 2025 batch 2 has started on 5th October 2024. The orientation has started on 5th October but the test is starting on 19th October. So we have provided the registration link in the description. You can click the link from the description and you can register for this particular test series to check your preparedness for preliminary examination. So why are you waiting? Just register as soon as possible. So with this note, let us get into the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. In this first article, we will be seeing about Green EM, what are the issues with it and what are all the way forward to address the issues. Then in the second article, we will be seeing about PSLV C-37 rocket, the re-entry of the rocket body of this particular rocket. And in the third article, we will be seeing about SEBI from the prelims perspective. So without any delay, let us get into the news article discussion. Now look at this news article. This news article talks about SEBI. The news is that SEBI has allowed certain stock brokers to buy and sell government securities or the G6. See these G6 are 90 days securities that has been sold by our central government. So currently SEBI has allowed the stock brokers to buy these G6. This is what the article is about. And these stock brokers, they can buy it through negotiated dealing system, order matching or in short called as NDS OM. See, NDS OM is a electronic autonomous order matching system for trading in government securities. It has been introduced by RBI in 2005 and it is maintained by Clear Corp Dealing Systems India Limited in short called as CCIL. See this system is nothing but if there is a buyer and if there is a seller, if the seller issues a price say for 100 rupees, if the buyer also wanted to buy such a product for 100 rupees product or uh, security for 100 rupees these both buyers and sellers will be matched through an electronic order matching system so this electronic order matching system is nothing but this nds om so remember it has been designed specifically for matching orders for gsec which is a security for a very shorter duration okay so this is what the article is about now in this background let us revise about sebi from the prelims perspective before that we'll see when sebi was first introduced so it was introduced in 1988 as a non-statutory body later it became a statutory body through the establishment of the sebi act so it is placed or its headquarters is placed in Mumbai. Now talking about the composition of SEBI, SEBI has a chairman and eight members. These members, among them, two of the members will be from Ministry of Finance and Corporate Affairs and one member will be from RBI and five members and chairman will be appointed by the central government. So remember these facts, there will be a chairman and then eight members. Among the members, one will be from RBI and two will be from Ministry of Finance and Corporate Affairs. So apart from these three members, all the other people like the five members and a chairman, they will be appointed by the central government. Okay. Now let us quickly go through the regulatory rules of RBI. See, the first important role played by RBI is protecting the investors. How they will be protecting investors? By providing accurate information and by preventing insider trading. See, if you have seen scam 1992 series it is a series you can watch it if you have seen the series you will be knowing what are all the aftermath or after effects of these insiders trading so watch the series when you have time so preventing this is the main function of sebi apart from this it works for grievance redressal as well this is the first important function of sebi secondly fair trading so by protecting the investors from uh, any hazard the SEBI is trying to bring in fair trading mechanism within the markets and apart from this it works for regulating market intermediaries and it works for market monitoring and enforcement and market development as well. Apart from this it carries out certain functions for example it enforces penalty for violations and it takes legal actions against frauds and it also takes any deterrent measures in case of any emergencies. Specifically, when we talk about market development, it enhances liquidity and market attractiveness to bringing lot of 
FDI and FDI and it also relaxes regulation for startups and SMEs. Apart from this, it also regulates mutual funds and credit rating agencies and it ensures compliance and performance standards. So these are all very relevant facts that you have to remember about SEBI. So priorly SEBI was not uh, statutory body later it was made into a statutory body after the establishment of this SEBI 1992 act so remember this composition and some of the functions that it takes now with this understanding let us try to solve this particular question here four statements are given and you have to find what are all the functions of SEBI so first is corporate governance second is regulation of mutual funds third is monitoring foreign portfolio and fourth is regulation of stock exchanges so what will be the correct answer for this particular question the correct answer here is option B all the above so all the four or functions of SEBI so these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this news article this news article talks about the re-entry of rocket body of this particular PSLV C37 so this is what the news is about so in this news article discussion let us revise about some basics of this PSLV C37 and some of the significance of the re-entry of the body parts of this particular satellite so we shall get into the news article discussion see when we talk about the mission details first it was launched in 2017 but the re-entry has happened in 2024 just look at the year difference and while launching this particular mission one not four number of satellites together was clubbed and sent to the space so it has broken the record of uh, russia which has launched 37 satellites in 2014 so later in 2017 india has launched 104 satellite so this is the highest number of single deployed satellite in space so among these 104 satellites 94 satellites were from usa and certain satellites were from israel Kazakhstan, Netherlands, Switzerland and UAE and the main or the primary satellite is this Cartosat 2D. This satellite is a earth observation satellite which provides high resolution images which will be useful for urban planning, disaster management and etc. So this particular launch was carried out by Antrix Corporation and it is a four stage rocket. So it has four different stages carrying payloads of 104 satellites okay so it was launched from Sriharikota from India and it was inducted in the sun synchronous orbit here for those who don't know sun synchronous orbit is nothing but it means the satellite will be synced or fixed in the same position relative to the sun so this is known as the sun synchronous orbit and it is it has an altitude of 600 to 800 kilometers so these were the basic so these were the basic information that you have to remember about this PSLV C37 mission currently the first stage of this C37 mission has re-entered earth's surface so re-entry is nothing but so whenever a rocket is launched with a payload especially this mission has four stages right so the first mission will be uh, left in the space like this so this part will be circulating in the space as a debris and it might cause any damage to the international space station or it might collide with any other asteroids and there are possibilities where these debris they again gets dragged by our earth's atmosphere into our earth and while they enter the atmosphere they will be burning like a meteor a comet okay so this is what usually happens but without any particular mechanism for re-entry the atmospheric drag itself has brought the first stage of the rocket inside our earth's surface so isro has been monitoring all the activities of the debris using the system for safety and sustainable space operation management in short called as IS4OM and it has been working in collaboration with USS PACECOM and NO RAD for tracking the space debris so after burning of the remnants or the debris final part has reached our earth this is only is known as the re-entry into earth now this re-entry is very significant because it is going to reduce the space debris leading to sustainable space activities so this is regarding the PSLV C37 mission 
Apart from this, there are certain achievements of PSLV that you have to remember from the prelims perspective. PSLV has the track record of being the workhorse of ISRO. So, it has launched a large number of satellites into the space and that is why it has earned the name workhorse of ISRO. And it has been paired up with other successful missions like Mangalyaan and even Chandrayaan-1. Apart from this, PSLV has been used uh, for collaborating with foreign satellites as well. So, this brings global integration particularly to work towards a common goal and to collaborate with other space organizations. So, these are the facts that you have to remember about PSLV from the prelims perspective. So, with these basic facts. Now, let us see a prelims question. This is a previous question asked in 2018. Here, three statements are given and you have to find which of the statements given here is or are correct. The first statement says, PSLV launched the satellite useful for earth resources monitoring, whereas GSLV are designed mainly to launch communication satellites. Second statement says, satellites launched by PSLV appears to remain permanently fixed in the same position in the sky as viewed from a particular location on earth. Third statement says, GSLV Mark III is a four-stage launch vehicle with the first and third stage using solid rocket motors and the second and fourth stage using liquid rocket engines. So, here the correct answer is option A only one. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this article about sovereign green bonds issued by central government. The news says that government will be issuing the green bonds for the rest of uh, 2024 to 25 only if the investors are willing to pay the premium named the greenium okay for the premium for this particular uh, bond is known as greenium so if investors are interested to pay this greenium then only government will launch this particular sovereign green bonds this is what the article is talking about so in this news article discussion let us revise about greenium from the prelims perspective so what is this greenium as i said earlier it is a premium or extra financial benefit that is paid by the investor who gets their money invested in the green bonds or we can say it this way so whenever a bond is issued by a central government or any issuer in this particular case of uh, green bonds, it is central government, okay. So, when a bond is issued, investors will try to buy the bonds, right. So, after a period of time, they will get yield. Say, for example, the traditional yield uh, for any traditional bond is 5 percentage and again, if the green bonds, they have mm -hmm. only 4.5 percentage of yield. If this is the case, then the 5 percent, that 0.5 percent difference between the two the traditional bonds and the green bonds this 0.5 percentage of yield this is only is known as the greenium so this is taken by the government as a premium cost for investing in the green bonds so this is the very basic explanation of what is this greenium and how it actually works so these green bonds they are issued by central government to raise fund for any green infrastructure development. So, it focuses on providing a positive environmental or climate benefit based infrastructure across the country. Okay. Now, let us quickly go through the key aspects of greenium. Firstly, there is higher demand for greener bonds and it focuses on ESG. So, it, here E is environment, S is social and G is governance. Okay. So, secondly, it offers lower yield for issuers but it secures a lower borrowing cost. And thirdly and most importantly, it incentivizes the sustainable investment across different sectors in a particular country. Okay. So, these are the key aspects of Greenium. Now, let us quickly go through the issues with respect to this particular Greenium. See, the first issue is this greenwashing risk. See, many companies, they can issue their bond, which is not actually a green bond, as a green bond. So, this false branding of a bond as a green bond is only is known as the greenwashing. And this risk can affect the credibility of green bonds that are issued by our government. Secondly, it lacks standardization, meaning there might be misallocation of the funds that has been raised from this particular bond because there is no particular standards as in where to invest how much amount of money. So, this lack of standardization is an issue and thirdly, there is a very limited green projects across the country. That is, there is higher demand but the availability is very low. 
Apart from this, as I said earlier, there is a lower yield for investors. So, they have to pay greenium, right? as a premium for uh, investing in the green bonds. So, this will actually not attract any uh, investors because they have to pay greenium, right? So, instead of choosing a green bond, they will be choosing a traditional bond which will give higher yield. So, there is such a big issue with respect to this sovereign green bonds. Apart from this, there is verification and reporting challenges and there are issues in truly verifying whether a particular bond is a green bond or not. So, these are all certain issues that are surrounding the green EM bonds. So, if you ask what can be done, firstly, we can establish an universal standard. We can develop clear and universally accepted definitions for any particular procedure that are going to be taken place and we can harmonize regulatory frameworks. Secondly, we have to improve transparency and accountability by bringing in third party verification and for this we can use digital platforms as well. Apart from this, we can develop a broader green market by focusing and expanding the green projects that are currently undertaken in the country and we can encourage public private partnership through awareness generation and we can diversify green bonds in different sectors. So, all these will expand the market for green market and reduce the availability issue that is currently faced by this green bonds. So, these are the very important facts that you have to remember about green EM. So far, we saw about what is green EM, some of the features of it, some of the issues with it and what can be done to address these issues. So, with this basic understanding, now let us quickly go through a prelims question regarding this concept. Which of the following is not a character of green bonds? Option A, they are issued to fund projects with environmental benefits. Second option says they generally offer higher returns than conventional bonds due to their eco-friendly nature. Third option says they may attract a greenium or lower yield compared to conventional bonds. Fourth option says governments may cancel green bond option if the required premium is not met by the market. So, here the correct answer is option B. Option B is the right answer for this question meaning it is not the characteristic of a green bond. So, if you like the video hit like. So, we came to the end of the news article repeat Pandra. So, we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video hit like do comment and do not forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Now, thank you so much for listening.